Hi and welcome. My name is Julianne Cost, and we're going to take the next few minutes to look at all of the enhancements that were made to the DNG file format in Lightroom 4. Now, most of you are probably familiar with DNG, and it's mostly often associated with saving raw files. But what's really important about DNG and what differentiates it from the other file formats like Nikon's NEF and Canon's CRW file format is that the DNG file format is openly documented and openly licensed. So it is not a proprietary file format, which for me, it gives me confidence as a photographer that I will be able to open up my photographs far into the future because any software developer or manufacturer will be able to read and write these DNG files. Of course, there's additional benefits as well. For example, um, the file size is going to be a lot smaller when you convert to RAW to DNG, even though we don't throw anything away. We maintain everything that's in the original file in the DNG file format. It can greatly simplify a workflow, especially if you've got like a multi-user environment or an educational setting where you have multiple people using different cameras, they can convert to DNG and that will simplify what software is needed to read those files. And lastly, and probably most importantly, is, is versioning, right? So versioning is built into the file format. So as new technologies come about or as technologies evolve, we can include those in this file format. So let's go ahead and take a look at all these improvements in Lightroom 4. I'll go ahead and select just maybe these first four images here in Lightroom, and then I'll go under the library menu to show you the options when converting photos to DNG. Now, Right now, I'm starting in the library, but if I was importing files, I could import and convert to DNG, and I would get this same option. And the option that I'm talking about is the embed fast load data. So what is that? What that allows us to do is when we create the DNG file, we're embedding a little bit of information, maybe like 200K, so it's not much. We're embedding that information into the DNG, and what it gives us is a preview file. Now, you might be thinking of the preview files that are in the library module. This is not what I'm talking about. Those cached previews that are in the library module, Lightroom will still continue to make those so that when you're viewing images in the library, you'll be able to see things quickly. But what customers actually request more often is a speedier experience in the develop module. So by saving or embedding this fast load data, into your DNG files, they can load up to eight times faster in the develop module. So that is fantastic. And this is on by default. There is a preference. You can turn it off, but I really don't know why you would, wouldn't want to take advantage of that. Now, the second new feature, also very interesting, is right underneath the embed fast load data, and that is to use lossy compression. So this is kind of a paradigm shift for some people because most of us think that our DNG files are our archival, kind of our digital negatives, right? Well, we now have the ability to use lossy compression on these files to make them a lot smaller. This is not for everyone, and this is probably not to be used on every image that you shoot. But let's take some examples maybe where, I don't know, maybe you go on Safari and you take 5,000 images. Well, you might know that you're never, ever, ever going to want 4,000 of those images. Instead of having those images be full-size DNG files, taking up a lot of space on your hard drive, you could use this lossy compression in order to reduce those file size. But I, I'll tell you, it, it is lossy. It's, it's like JPEG compression. If you want to know more about it, you can read it in the, uh, in the, in the developer's kit. But we are going to take that information and throw away a bunch of it. So this is not what you want to do for that hero shot. This is only all of your outtake shots. Or maybe you photographed a wedding and you've got 500 images that are great and 1,500 that are not. Maybe those 1,500 you know that they're never going to see the light of day, but you don't want to throw them away. That would be a great candidate to use this lossy compression. One caveat, of course, is that if you do use the lossy compression and then you, you have to use that image in the future and you really need to push it, like you really need to um, bump up the highlights or it's very under or overexposed, making huge changes to this file, well, because it's saved with compression, it would tend to break down earlier than, say, an image that was not saved with that lossy compression. 
The third enhancement to DNG takes this process, this compression process, one step further. Now, it's not available on import, and it's not available in that convert dialog that we just saw, but it is available on export. So you'll see here, if I choose to export my files as DNG, not only can I use the lossy compression, but if that is enabled, I can actually change the pixel dimensions of my image. So unlike import and convert files, where all we're doing is compressing the file, this actually will throw away total pixel count. right? So I could say, maybe if we go back to that wedding example, if you had those 1,500 images that you knew were never going to be printed, maybe larger than 4 by 6, you could go ahead and resize those to fit as well. And obviously, this is going to make your file size much, much smaller than just using the lossy compression alone. Again, it's not for everyone. It's not for every shoot. And I realize that, that hard drive space is relatively inexpensive, so some people are going to choose to never use this. But I want to make sure that you know that the opportunity is there if it's something that makes sense for your workflow. And one last thing that I just want to mention, I'll cancel out of here, and that is when you start saving your DNG files with maybe this lossy compression versus the DNG files that don't have lossy compression, you'll notice underneath the metadata panel here in the library module in grid view, I can now change this to file type, and you'll see that the digital negative, if we just close that there, you can see that it says that the ones that I've saved are lossless. I haven't saved any in the other format when I'm actually reducing the image size, but if I do, then that will come up as another option here. Excellent. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Julianne Cost. I hope to see you again soon.